Amen. Well, welcome to Broken Chains Church. God <laughs> is alive and well and moving by His Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I don't usually get a chance to check, but my phone was blowing up, and uh, I, we got five or six online tonight. And uh, so, thank you for joining us there. We probably got a lot more than that, but they always we have five or six that let us know they were there. <laughs> we usually have a lot more than that. We go back and look at the data and all those things. But uh, you're here. You know, some things can be taught and other things have to be caught. And when you're in the room, some things you usually can get caught if you're hungry for it. Amen. And uh, so you'll say, where is that at? Well, we it's all through the book of Acts. You know, Simon, the sorcerer, he tried to get a hold of some of it. We studied last week, you know, he wanted to lay out that gift of laying on of hands. And, you know, how many know you can't buy the anointing? Amen. 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 But you can live your life sanctified and set apart the flow of it. And it's good. So tonight we are starting chapter three of a four. No, I don't know how many chapters are we kept total. Does anybody keep your table of contents from the beginning? That's it, Brian. I still need to go to chapter one. Chapter one. <laughs> They're all online, Brother Bill. Every one. Uh, yeah. You can go back and check them all because we do build on top of uh, things we've already taught. But we, we have uh, compiled it all, and they're online. You can go to brokenchangechurch.com. You can go to Broken Change Church YouTube channel. You can probably even go to Facebook and find your way there. Not just you. I'm telling it for everybody. I know. And so then I got YouTube. type in Holy Spirit, Broken Change Church, and it'll bring it up. And I, I would suggest starting with basic Bible doctrine on the Holy Spirit and uh, just the whole basic Bible doctrine that we have out there taught is a great for anybody wanting to start learning those things. It's, I would I would suggest it for anybody. And you can go over The Bible's fresh and new every day. I, there's things that I went over years ago that I go over today, and I still get something new out of it. So yeah, yeah. I would encourage that and to build upon it. So I might, you know, if I put all the backstory to everything I'm teaching, I would never go any farther ahead. So... If something's there, say to me, I'll hook you up with the materials you need to fill in your spots. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. So tonight, we are on chapter three. I said I want to do this all in one setting, but I'm already behind the ball. It's already, what time? Hey, the Lord don't have a time. Everybody heard of this. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, y'all can send him the thank you card. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> Daddy's like, I don't know what to do with him. <laughs> Chapter 3. Two separate experiences, salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, we talked about this in detail about how you get, you get saved, you get the Spirit of Christ, and then they come along and they say, hey, have you received Christ yet? And they said, hey, we've received Christ. And I said, well, have you received the Holy Ghost? They said, no. And he said, well, let's help you there. Amen. And, uh, you know, the thief on the cross, uh, the Holy Ghost had not yet been released upon the earth, but he made heaven, right? Jesus said that you're going to be with me in paradise even this day. So he was saved when he called out on Jesus, believed he who he was, he didn't even have to get baptized. But the Word of God says, repent, be baptized, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's not a suggestion, but if you get the first one done and you, and you get taken out before you get the rest of them finished, uh, you're not going to split hell wide open if, as long as you've confessed Jesus to be Lord of your life. But the Holy Spirit has a lot to offer, and we've been studying that. And it's important to be filled with him. It's important to let him flow in your life. And the speaking in tongues is just the evidence. It's just the tidbit of it. But tonight we're going to look at the two differences. Now, Brother Hagin and me differ on a couple of his points, but uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. You, you know, you get saved, you get the Spirit of Christ, uh, and you do, the way he words it, you do get some of the, you, you get the, how many know it's the Trinity? I, I, I don't want to butcher this and go too fast. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Three in one. You know, like, he's like a really good oil. Some of you guys need it. I'm still in my age here, I can tell. There's an oil called three in one. <laughs> Believe my wife's like, oh. <laughs> Used it on Singer's Sewing Machine for a while. 
So anyhow, don't ask me how that happened. You know. My mother was well explained. It. Lord, help me out of here. <laughs> so you get saved in three and one. So Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you have those attributes. And, you know, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, meekness, long-suffering. But you notice he didn't say uh, prophesying, tongue-talking, none of these other things. Those are all fruit that comes from getting filled up with the Spirit of Christ. Love, joy, peace, meekness, long-suffering. How many know that is who, who Christ was? And so you have his, you get his attributes. The Bible says to get what? The mind of Christ. Now, did you just wake up as soon as you asked Jesus to be Lord of your life and say, mm, I have the mind of Christ. Mm, I have the mind of Christ. Anybody in here do that? Did it work for you? If it did, I want to follow you around for a while. Because it doesn't happen if you study to show yourself approved. A workman rightly dividing the word of God. And you started putting the word into you. And as you put it into you, and the Bible says as you look into the glass and you see your reflection, don't be as one that looks and then walks away and forgets what they saw. Look. And you're looking into the word. The word's looking into you. And you start changing yourself. And as you do, you grow in those attributes. Everybody yeah, with baby. me on that part? Yeah, baby. And, uh, you know, there was a season in my life as a young believer, the Lord tried, to, not the Lord, the devil tried to convince me that I could never grow in some of that, you know? Long-suffering, who are you talking about? Anybody here? Anybody in here to love long-suffering? Anybody here perfected it? I'm much better than I used to be. I mean, it takes a lot, but I'd like it to get someday, hopefully, before Jesus comes back, where I can. Yes, sir. Amen. On that. <laughs> so, in Acts chapter eight, the ministry of Philip in Samaria is recorded. As we study this account, it becomes evident that salvation. Can you turn me up a little bit, Sister Becky? I'm really having to forget. They were complaining online that they had trouble hearing me. Not the game. Yeah, just, turn the just turn the main. No, the main. Turn the main. The main guy. Turn the main. Main, main. Keep going. Can you hear me now? Keep going. Good. <laughs> All right, that's good. Yeah, it's good. Starting to ring, we'll leave it there. So, can y'all hear me a little better now? No. Right. We heard you before. <laughs> As we study this account, it becomes evident that salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit are two separate experiences. Now we're going to look at the Word of God here. Acts chapter 8, 5 through 8, and Acts 12 through 17. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. What did he preach? Christ. Christ. He was an evangelist. He was going to get them saved. Did you just wake up one day and say, I want to get saved? Or did somebody tell you about Jesus? More than likely, whether you remember it or not, somebody came along and dropped some seed into you someday and started telling you about Jesus. Whether it was your parents, Amen. grandparents, somebody on the street, somebody told you about him. Amen. And if you have, don't really know who he is, let me tell you about him. He's right your here. Savior. He's wonderful. He's a counselor. He, you know, he, you want to sum it up in two words? He's I am. Everything you have need of, he says, I am. Well, I don't know about this. He says, I am. The devil says, you're not going to make it because of this. He says, I am. That's who Jesus is. And when you preach that to people, without telling it, without putting in all the falsehoods that says, you know, he's going to make you rich and you're never going to have any trouble and all the other lies that people have tried to squit, spin along, and you tell them, no, listen, Jesus is going to be with you through thick and thin. When you go through rough times, he's going to give you peace. He's going to give you joy. He's going to always cause you to overcome as long as you stay in Christ. You say, well, who would be dumb enough to get out of Christ? People that get deceived, people that get tired, people that get wore out, people that, that, that forget who they are in Christ. But I'm so thankful that the scripture talks about when we get to those places even, as we talked about Sunday, they get times of refreshing. But a good way to stay refreshed daily is to stay full of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Am I with me yet? So he preached unto them, and the people with one accord gave heed unto these things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Now Philip, anybody remember how he got into ministry? Huh? 
Lord. The Lord guided me to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Wasn't he one of the, like the Stephen was one of the the leaders? He was one of the men when they needed somebody to fill in when his disciples was giving all their time and they were supposed to be spending their time in prayer and studying of the word. They said, well, the widows and people are going without. I know it's the church's job to take care of the widows, those who are without. I mean, oh, that's our job. It's not the government's job. It's our job. And the government's, the church has dropped the ball for a long time. But there's a difference between true widows and true people that need help and lazy people <laughs> and people that, I'm just going to talk to you straight. You know, the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. Right. You didn't say go lay around and somebody else supports you. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he also goes on and he talks about, you know, there's some people that don't want to do anything, and there's some people that just fall on hard times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How's the difference? Well, the difference is usually in their heart. Yeah. Now, you know, there's a, and today a lot of people in America that say they're poor and they're destitute. Let me tell you, I take them with me to a third world country, places I've been when you see kids literally eating trash off the sidewalk that's been there forever. And I'm not talking about American sidewalk. I'm talking about a 300, 400 year old cobblestone. There's a difference in that they're, they're living in underneath this little thing. And, you know, you start really understanding what poverty is, what mm -hmm. poor is. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't help people that are doing without, but how, the Bible says that we're to go and teach people faith. Right. You know, everybody hears the old saying, you know, you keep giving man fish every day, you're going to have to give him back and give him fish every day. You teach him how to fish, and he'll never have to come back. So you know what happens when people really get saved, start seeing these yeah. things, and start learning faith, guess what? They start believing that instead of, you know, the enemy tries to get people upset with one another. Well, they're more blessed than me. They're all this and all that. But when you start really learning who God is, you start believing if God can do it for them, he can do it for me. Anybody with me? How many, come on, some of you here need to believe for the first time. But if God can do it for them, he can do it for me. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he's no respecter of persons. So don't take the bait of the enemy. So Stephen, while, what I bring this up, Stephen, before he even got to be a head table waiter, said he was already ministering full of the Holy Ghost and doing signs, wonders, and miracles. That was just before he got promoted to be a head table waiter. Now, a lot of people today would say, I'm, I'm, I'm ministry ready. Man, hell, he was just ready to be head table waiter. But after he served being head table waiter, they said that he did great miracles while he was doing it, while he was ministering to other people's needs, while he was promoting other people before himself. While he was being a servant, God was maturing him so much that he had the opportunity to come finally and, and evangelize. And he was doing, people were seeing and hearing great miracles. Well, why am I bringing all this out? Remember last week we talked about denominations that tried to say that, uh, that, that the signs and wonders ended with the apostles well they say well Philip was an apostle but he wasn't an original apostle this, at this time this guy there's another one in there don't get confused and so but he was doing all the same things right? right so that means we can do all the same thing mm -hmm. which we do mm -hmm. and so they're seeing miracles which he did it says, it says for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. Uh, for the record, this still happens today. Still goes on. And there's some people that, that you know why they don't get rid of their demons? Because they enjoy playing with them too much. Mm -hmm. yep. I've, I've cast stuff out of some people and they went and got <laughs> seven more worse than the one they were in. Mm -hmm. Don't be that guy. Right. But... Sometimes the enemy will want you to believe that you're just stuck with stuff. You're uh -huh. never stuck with stuff. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Behold, you're a new creature in Christ. Behold, old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Amen. Either the word's all true or it's none true. Right? Right. And so we see these guys are doing miraculous things. 
And it says, and many taken with praise, and they, they were lamed, were healed. So we see the healed, and there was great joy in that city. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So they were baptized. Right? Got dumped in water. They made an open submit. They, told, they called all their friends, everybody around, and said, come over here and watch this. I am forever changed. The baptism is a, it's an outward showing of an inward change. It means that word bab, baptized means in baptismo in the Greek. It means to make fully wet, to fully submerse. That's why there's not a little sprinkling. He said fully wet. And it's a, it's a representation of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When you go under the water, you're representing 2 Corinthians 5, 17 in full strength. You're representing that you're dying to that old man, that flesh, and that you're going into that place where Jesus is at in the tomb, and when you come up, you're a new creature in Christ, and behold, all things has passed away, and your, your spirit man is resurrected, you're right with Christ, the only way Jesus can do, and forevermore, if you keep your life in order and stay in line with Christ, you are, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen? And so we see they believed. Now, you know, if we all preach like Philip, we would have houses, the church house would be full. I'm doing my best to be doing that once again. I've done it before. I'm doing it again. When he, you know, signs, wonders, miracles follow you, then people at least show up to see what's going on. And I've told God several times, you can just light me on fire so people can come to watch me burn. Some will come think I'm crazy, and some will come to see if it's real, and some will figure out who God is. But at least they're coming. That's my heart's desire. Some of you come tonight to answer to my prayer. I don't know which one you're going to decide I'm crazy or what you're going to decide before the night's over, but I'm glad you're here. Amen. 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 And so uh, then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now, who is Simon here? The sorcerer. He was the one that was doing all kinds of witchcraft, and he was actually, he was the most powerful spiritual being around until the, until Stephen showed up. And then he realized that he had nothing but cheap tricks. And he seen what they were doing, and he got saved, but he still hadn't got rid of all that old flesh man yet. Anybody ever been there? Mm -hmm. And he decided, man, I could make some money if I could get laid with hands on the way these guys can. And so it goes on to say, now when the apostles which are at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God concerning salvation, they sent unto them Peter and John. Now, by the way, for the record, Simon got rebuked. He repented. He got saved. And he ended up getting filled with the Holy Ghost and became a real man of God. But I'm so happy that we don't always get it. You know, not everybody gets it right. But God is always willing to work with us if we're willing to keep chasing after him. Amen. Amen. And so, who, when they came down, prayed for them that they might receive the what? Now, this is straight out of your Bible. You can pick up any Bible you want, and we're not twisting nothing. We're not perverting nothing. You can look these verses up. This is what it says. So, they got saved, they got baptized, and they came down, and they said, and when they asked them in a few other translations and in the different uh, books of Matthew and, and Mark and places, they say, well, they say, we, we've received Jesus. We know nothing of this Holy Ghost you talk about. And do you know what people are afraid to ask people that today? Because they're afraid they're going to look crazy. You know, some people we get brave enough to ask them if they got Jesus. Listen, that is the most important thing first, but it's not the end of what he told us to do. It's not the end of what he told us to receive. You know, trying to convince somebody who he is without the power of him, that's a little hard, ain't it? Mm -hmm. That's why he gave us the Holy Ghost. Right? Mm -hmm. So, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. So they had the Spirit of Christ. It says, then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Woo! I 
How about you? That was a rocking party. I'm telling you, man. Can you imagine? Woo! Lord, they were already joyful. I remember when you first got saved. Anybody in here? You were happy. You wanted to tell everybody about it. Mm -hmm. I got I got them saved. Mm -hmm. You had to ask me, get, get it to you. Get it. It'll change something in you. Well, let me tell you, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, it'll put a new level of boldness up in you. Because it's not about you, it's about who's in you. Mm -hmm. And the things that once used to fear and dominate you will no longer have hold on you. <coughs> Philip, who was later called Philip the Evangelist in Acts 21 8. Oh, look at that. We just confirmed what I told you. Here. Had a marvelous ministry in Samaria, as he stated in verses 7 and 8. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed and they were great. There was great joy in that city. Woo. Mighty miracles was constantly being manifest in Philip's ministry and many people were being saved. Yet notice in Acts chapter eight, not one person received the Holy Spirit under Philip's ministry. Evidently, that was not part of Philip's ministry, but getting folks saved and healed was. Now, was it always Jesus's plan and God's plan, <laughs> the Holy Spirit plan, for people to get filled with the Holy Ghost? Yes, but. People have different anointings. Philip was an evangelist. His job was to get people saved, uh, manifest the presence and the miracles of God, and then come along some other Holy Ghost Spirit filled people, and they could simply say, Be healed in Jesus, or, or be filled in Jesus' name. And boom, the Holy Ghost would fill. Now, listen, my job isn't trying to give you something, it's your job to receive something. If somebody doesn't, you, when I was a young minister, I'd get upset because if somebody didn't get filled when I laid their hands on them, a lot of times I'd think there was something wrong with me. Maybe one of my younger years was, but nothing else that made me search my heart. Mm -hmm. But I come to realize that I could tell when somebody's spirit was open and somebody's spirit wasn't. Or when they heard, a lot of times people will come up and they'll start feeling the anointing and it'll wig them out and they'll shut it off and say, I got enough. <laughs> I don't want no more. That's enough. <laughs> no, I need you. But how I many know oh, God wants you to have all of it? Amen? Amen. So, however, the Bible says that when the apostles at Jerusalem heard about the wonderful things God had done through Philip's ministry in Samaria, they sent Peter and John to lay hands on the new Samaritan converts so that they might receive the Holy Ghost. There is no record that upon whom Peter and John laid their hands failed to receive the Holy Ghost, because Peter and John had more of a ministry along this line. The Bible says, then laid they Peter and John their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost, Acts 8, 17. Before the record, we also see where Paul did that. And he said that this gift is unto your kids and unto your generation, to the other foremost most generation. I'm, par I'm TV paraphrasing the verses. I'm going fast. I know how to pay me. <laughs> but it's for everyone, right? <laughs> The Bible says you shall lay hands on them and they shall receive the Holy Ghost, right? Didn't say they might. It didn't say they could. It didn't say they should. It said they shall. Shall. So, you know, now I've had a few people that I laid hands on and they would go home. Now, usually there was a warfare going on in their mind and in their spirit and the enemy was trying to Stop the anointing coming through. There's been a few of them. They went home and wrestled. They got filled in the bathroom. They told me they just fell over. The whole power of the Holy Ghost started talking in tongues. I've heard two or three days later. I myself, whenever I got refilled after coming back to the Lord, I was three days later on my way to work, and all of a sudden this sound started coming up inside of me. I was like, "What's going on?" I called pastors up. They just laughed and they were so happy. I'm like, "I gotta go to work." <laughs> It's true. You say, well, I thought he was a gentleman. He was. I was that humble. Mm -hmm. These verses of Scripture help me as a young minister in the dominational church to see that there is an experience sub subsequent to or following salvation called the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I have been taught that when you are saved, you receive the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to ask anybody to raise hands, but that's a common thing that a lot of people teach. But we can look at the Word and we can see otherwise. Now, 
Bible says lay aside vain arguing. I'm not going to argue with people. But you know, usually when somebody wants to dispute me, they don't. You know, they don't bring their Bible. They bring somebody else's commentary. It's like forty pages thick to explain one sentence. I found it's easier just to believe the one sentence because there's another hundred to go with it. Because God's word, it, it, it's, it's just not the God's not the author of confusion. And his word never contradicts itself. Now, there were some things as I was coming up that I felt like did contradict. When I finally believed that his word didn't, then he'd show me the truth. And, you know, if you've got, if you got 20 things that all say this and one says the opposite, then there's probably something you're missing in that key verse. And you need to keep digging and praying into it. And each time I've ever done that, then he showed me that. Because his word will not contradict itself. That's right. This is all free tonight. Not costing you a dime, just time. <laughs> that is true in one sense because the Bible says that in the new birth we are born the Spirit of God, John 3, 3, 8. I believe that's the Spirit of Christ. But my denomination taught that when you're born again you have all the Holy Ghost there is to have however you Samaritans. In Acts chapter 8 we say if we're born again by the Spirit of God, verses 12 through 14, as we will plainly see from the Scripture in a moment. But the apostles didn't seem to think that they had all the Holy Ghost there was to have because they sent Peter and John to them so the Samaritans could receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, salvation and receiving the infilling of the baptism of the Holy Spirit are two separate experiences. Everybody get that? The Samaritans born again under Philip's ministry. Now let's go back and look at the Scriptures which prove conclusively that these Samaritans were born again under Philip's ministry so we can see that being born again and receiving the Holy Spirit are two separate experiences. We remember that Jesus told us in the Great Commission that salvation comes to the preaching of the gospel, the word of God. Amen? How I many know that's, that's how you get saved? You know, some people call it the foolishness of God, the preaching. Some people like to make fun of it. Uh, but, you know, there won't be any laughing on Judgment Day, that's the part that I wish so many people could get in these last days. Mark 16, 15 through 16. Go ye into all the world. Anybody notice anything up here? It's Matthew 28, 19. That's one of my favorite verses. Just straighten our banner up. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to the ones you like. The ones that you are called to. Is that what it says? The ones that believe the same way as you. The ones that can benefit you the most in life. The ones that smell nice. It's not what he says, is it? I always love, people get so upset. I love how he worded this next part. And it spoke to me. He said to every creature. Some people that I've ministered to, I, they didn't even really fit in the physical form anymore. They were so bound up tied up and demonic that they were they were just a creature but the same gospel that set me free set them free I was probably a creature at one time they were like who is this creature what's he doing <laughs> he that believeth and is baptized shall be what saved <laughs> Everybody in here saved and they're going to make heaven. That's your first part. That's your starting point. With all this stuff, it don't matter until you get saved. Not your daddy prayed for you. Not grandma prayed for you. Not somebody else said something. Not somebody else believed for you. You've got to believe. Not that you said some words one time a long time ago. But you have to believe that Jesus is Lord and you've submitted your life to him. Amen? And he says, he that believeth not shall be what? Oh, y'all were loud on the other one. Come on. <laughs> he that believeth not shall be. Damn. Now, nobody likes to talk about that. I don't, I don't like to talk about that. Why? Because I love people. I would be a horrible pastor if I didn't love people. Now, I do want to slap the taste out of some people's mouth sometimes, but I still love them. I've not done it. I repented when I thought it, and I prayed for him and double blessed him. It's been good. But if you don't believe, 
It's not, well, this is what I think. Well, you know, you know how many times you read this to somebody and say, well, yeah, I hear that, but that's not what I believe. Well, well, I, that's not what I think. Let me right. tell you what I think. Mm -hmm. I, I've gotten just uh, maybe even a little crude in my old age. I just say, well, I really don't care what you think. Well, well, I don't even want to hear what you got to say. And someone said, that's crash. That's just crashing rough, Pastor. No, uh, it, don't, it don't matter what I got to say. It doesn't matter what my opinion is. It matters what the Word of God says. And that's what you're going to be judged by someday. So make sure you're in line with the Word of God. Amen? But he that believeth not shall be damned. You know what? You know, there's a reason why the enemy's trying to get you to constantly have doubt in your head. Right. Because he wants lots of company in the lake of fire. Yeah. His, his goal is to take as many people with him as he can. Mm -hmm. And you're either on one side or the other. There's no in-between ground. You're either all in or you're all out. Right. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. The enemy used another verse against me for a long time when I was running from God. There's another verse that says, if you're lukewarm, he'll spit you out of his mouth. Well, I was such an ignorant heathen that I decided I knew I couldn't be all the way in. And I knew I wasn't all bad at the time, but I wasn't going to get spit out of his mouth. So I might as well be all bad. Right. Ain't that dumb? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's dumb, ain't it? When I look back, I told my pastor, who Pastor Bobby, he loved me. He's going to be the Lord now. Every time I'd be doing something, he'd show up. You know, I won't go into all those stories tonight. But yeah, I, I finally, one time before he passed, he, he, he got that out of me. And he just... Tears came down his face. He said, Brian, that is not what that means. <laughs> I say, well, that's what I thought it meant. You see where I'm going with this? It wasn't what I thought it meant. It was, it's what the Word of God said. And it's not based, someday, there's not going to be our opinions we're judged by. It's going to be the Word of God. And I'm here to tell you, you don't have to do it the hard way. Right. You can have the Holy Ghost to help you. Amen. Amen. First scriptural witness. I'm not getting very fast. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. The Bible says that Philip preached Christ. The Samarians preaching Christ is preaching the good news of the gospel of the salvation through Jesus. It's good news. Preaching Christ is obeying the great commission that Jesus gave to the church. These Samaritans believe the gospel message Philip preached, and the, and the people with one accord gave heed unto these things which Philip spake. Acts 8, 6. So according to what Jesus said in Mark 16, 16, the Samaritans were saved. They believed on the Lord Jesus, confessed with their mouth, and believed in their heart. And the Bible says to let every truth be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. So some people say, if you've been around here and I teach you in Bible school and things, I say, well, if you're going to teach me something, if you're going to bring me a truth from the Word of God, the Bible, I want at least three things. It's Trinity. The Bible says there can be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. If you cherry pick one scripture out and try to just preach that one scripture, you're going to get in trouble. And that's what's happening all over the world anymore. You know, and God doesn't need your help to rewrite the word. He just needs you to preach the word. And if it's really that revelation you got is really from God, you'll find three places to line up with. Right. That's true. Mm -hmm. See? Two or three witnesses, 2 Corinthians 13, 1. So let's look at another scriptural witness which proves these Samaritans were born again. Second scriptural witness. We're looking at different verses here if you know what we're doing. The Bible says we are born again by the word of God. The book of Peter says we are born not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and bideth forever. 1 Peter 1, 23. Our scripture in Acts 8, 14 says, And now when the apostles were in Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had what? Received the word of God. They had believed it. They received it. I mean, there's a lot of people that hear the word. There's very few people that receive the word. Tonight as I'm preaching, you can receive the word or you can file in, a, in, in, in the can and think, well, that was good. Not bad for a dollar. <laughs> Anyhow, if you haven't heard my that old joke, you'll have to wait for another time. Therefore, as our second scriptural witness, we have proof that the Samaritans were genuinely saved because they had received the incorruptible word of God preached by Philip. Does everybody see where we're going with this? They were saved before they received the Holy Ghost. We're going over several verses here. That's what we're driving home. 
Third scriptural witness, the third scriptural witness is that the apostles recognized that the Samaritans were saved. Now when the apostles heard that the Samaritans had received the word of God, Acts 8, 14. So we see that the Samaritans were saved under Philip's ministry. These Samaritans had received the word of God concerning salvation, but the Bible says that they had yet to be filled with or baptized in the Holy Spirit. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of Lord Jesus, Acts 8, 16. There is a work of the Holy Spirit that takes place in the new birth, but that is not called the baptism in the Holy Spirit or receiving the Holy Spirit. That is called being born again, being born of the same Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, I would say, receiving <laughs> salvation or receiving eternal life, John 3, 3 through 8. Then there is an experience following salvation called the baptism in the Holy Spirit, Acts 1, 5. It is also referred to as receiving the Holy Spirit, Acts 8, 15, or being filled with the Spirit, Acts 2, 4, or being endued with power from on high, Luke 24, 49. The Samaritans received the Holy Spirit. Peter and John were sent down to Samaria for the specific purpose of praying for the Samaritan believers to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Is everybody getting the point that there's a difference between salvation and and being filled with the Holy Ghost. Is everybody seeing that being proven and driven home here? Okay. Acts 8, 14 through 17. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, that they were born again, uh, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were taken down prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. What were they doing? They had to receive. It's a gift. It's it doesn't come with the package, but it's offered any time. You've got a new, you've got a new Lamborghini sitting outside, or a new Road Glide, or whatever your thing is, or you know, seventy one Z twenty eight Camaro sitting out there. Here's the keys. It's yours. You can tell everybody you have it, but until you go out there and turn the key and fire the power up, it doesn't really belong to you. It's not in operation. It can be yours at any time. So let us see. Some might ask why Peter and John had to go pray for the Samaritans to receive the Holy Ghost. Why couldn't Philip have prayed for them just as well? But we must remember that we each have our place in God's plan. We must each find that place to do what God wants us to do, not as special ministers. Now, I'm going to say a little something. I see what he's driving home here. I agree with it. But the truth is any believer that's filled with God, who's sanctified and set apart, can lay their hands on any other believer and pray for them to receive the Holy Ghost. If they're hungry and they want to receive, they can get it. Now, if your life's not in order, it's going to be a bunch of dead hands. If they ain't really hungry for it, he didn't say, try me and see. This ain't that kind of thing. He said, receive from me. Whenever you're ready to receive something, you don't just go, well, let me keep first. <laughs> but a lot of people do that with the gift of the Holy Spirit. You've got to be fully committed on the way in. It's good. Take it. I, I spent a lot of time back on that. Go back and watch some other videos I won't spend a lot of time on tonight. Some might ask why uh, we didn't cover that. Philip had a mighty ministry, but it was a it was in the Lord's plan to send Peter and John to lay hands on a new convert so they could receive the Holy Ghost. As I said previously, what is true, any Christian can lay hands on another believer in faith to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is also true that some members of the body of Christ have more of a ministry and more of an anointing along this line. Philip, for example, had more of a ministry of bringing people into salvation, of ministering healing, as we saw in Acts 8, 12. When Philip preached the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ, people were saved. There was also many healings under Philip's ministry, Acts 8, 6 through 7. Peter and John, on the other hand, had a ministry more along the line of bringing believers into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When they laid their hands upon Samaritans, those new converts received the Holy Ghost. Anybody can do it, but God calls different people to do some different things. Some get them saved. Some plant a seed, some water, and God gives the increase. We all flow in our capabilities and bring people into fruition and to be, uh, grow them up as disciples of Christ. But God wants everybody to be what? Repent, baptize, and fill with the Holy Ghost as soon as possible. Let's see here. Acts 8, 17 through 19. Then laid they... Peter and John, their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when, saw, when Simon saw it, that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also the power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Remember, I talked about this earlier. Mm -hmm. Evidence the Samaritans received the Holy, Holy Spirit. 
Some who object to speaking with tongues say, it's true the Samaritans received the Holy Ghost, but they didn't speak with tongues. Baloney. There isn't any proof, however, the Samaritans did not speak with them. And the Bible says each time that they saw, they were filled. They saw, they received. If the, something didn't happen when they got it, how did they see something happen? Even here, they say that nothing happened. No, each time they say they saw that they were filled. They saw that they received. Well, then you could physically something happen that they saw. Y'all still with me? In fact, church historians argue that all the early church fathers concur that Samaritans did speak with tongues. It is apparent that Samaritans must have spoken in tongues, for the Bible says Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given. Acts 8, 18. What did Simon see? He certainly can't, you certainly can't see the Holy Ghost, for he's a spirit, cannot be seen with a physical eye. Therefore, there had to be some kind of a physical sign or evidence whereby Simon would know that the Samaritans had received the Holy Ghost. There had to be something that would register on Simon's physical senses whereby he could tell that the Samaritans had received the Holy Ghost. Simon didn't receive the Holy Ghost himself, but he could see that these others had received him. Come on, y'all with me? I know I'm going fast. Y'all still with me? So Simon saw something. I wonder sometimes this is where they got the game that Simon says. <laughs> Y'all never forget this verse. Now. Simon says, I want the Holy Ghost. So he was, one minister said to me, it may have been that Simon just saw the Samaritans were full of joy. This couldn't explain it, however, and joy can't, couldn't be the sign that Simon had seen because the believers were already filled with joy when Philip preached Christ unto them. I mean, remember, you got happy when you got saved. Mm -hmm. You didn't get drunk, but you got happy. Amen. But you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you'll get drunk. Mm -hmm. Trust me. It's a good kind of drunk. No hangover. Don't make you do nothing stupid. Don't cost nothing. It's good stuff. Top shelf. Best there is. It's a new one. I didn't call it that. God did. Acts 8, 5 through 18. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And there was great joy in that city. Do we see this? Therefore, the Samaritans had already had great joy, so they could not have been the sign of evidence which Simon saw that indicated the Samaritans had been filled with the Spirit. As I said, since the Holy Ghost can't be seen with the physical eye, there had to be some kind of sign that would cause Simon to know that these Samaritans who had received the Holy Ghost from Peter and John laid hands on them. All evidence indicates that the sign that was manifest was speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues was a sign that convinced Simon beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Samaritans had received the Holy Ghost. We discussed this in Bible evidence for receiving the Holy Spirit in chapter 9. You'll see that later on. Two separate experiences, Saul's conversion and baptism in the Holy Spirit. The passage in Acts chapter 9, which records Saul's baptism in the Holy Spirit, also shows us that receiving salvation and receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit are two separate experiences. Saul got saved on the Damascus Road. He didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost until he came and found the man of God that God told him to go to. And I still wouldn't have liked to have been that guy. Hey, the guy that's going around killing everybody, I'm, going to, I'm sending you over to pray for it. <laughs> He doesn't deserve me, God. <laughs> See the Holy Ghost slapping out from the Lord to you. So, the passage in Acts chapter 9, which reports Saul, Ben, and the Holy Spirit, all shows us that receiving salvation and receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit are two separate experiences. We know that Saul was already born again when Ananias came to lay hands on him. But Saul had not yet received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You see this once again, right? Everybody see it? It's important that you see it. I'm going fast. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can go back and watch. I know sometimes when they, if you've heard other denomination stuff, it may be like, what? what? I understand. Just study that. Saul's conversion. We know Saul had already been converted or born again on the Damascus Road, Acts 9, 1 through 9. For three reasons. First, in Acts 9, 15 through 16, Jesus speaking to Ananias in, 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 in a vision called Saul, his chosen vessel. Acts 9, 15 through 16. But the Lord said unto him, Ananias, go thy way, go thy way, for, for 
Saul is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Yay, suffering! <laughs> suffer as Christ. Glory. Don't do it without a holy Second, we know Saul was saved because when Ananias entered to the house where Saul was standing, Ananias greeted, greeted Saul by calling him Brother Saul. Listen, if you're not my brother in Christ, I'm not going to call you brother. I hate to break that to you. Some people are online and somebody somewhere is going to listen to this and go, oh, he didn't call me brother. Or <laughs> well, a sure way for me to do it. Get saved. You'll be my brother thick and thin. I'll stick to you stronger than glue if you let me. Now, if you run off, I ain't going to physically chase you down, but in the spirit realm, where I'm, I'm going to pray you down. So, there's that. <laughs> And Ananias went his way and entered to the house and put his hands on Saul. Said, Brother Saul, the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest. See, he prophesying, he saw, he saw a word of knowledge here. Has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Woo, that ought to make somebody want to get filled. So I want some of that. Ananias recognized that Saul was already a Christian brother in the faith. Third, we also know Saul was already saved when Ananias came to lay hands on him. Oh my goodness. I just jumped 100 pages. Glory. Not the right one. Where was that? Nine seventeen. All right, Christian brother in the faith. And I came to lay hands on him, receive the Holy Spirit, because the Bible says in Romans ten thirteen, for whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saul called Jesus Lord in his conversion on the Damascus road. Acts 9, 3 through 6. And as Saul journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Does everybody know he's not cussing there? Pricks was a two uh, pointed sticks that they put... Uh, that they put behind the donkeys as they were pulling back in the day. And when the donkeys would start getting rowdy and want to kick, they would kick those uh, pointed uh, pricks and it would cause them to get back in line. So he's saying, why am I having to chastise you? Why do you keep hurting yourself trying to do the things that you know you're not supposed to be doing? Glory. And so then it goes on. And he trembled and astonishedly said, Lord, who, what will thou have me do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and that shall be told thee what thou must do. However, even though Saul had received Jesus as his Lord, Saul was not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit, as we have seen. Saul was not baptized in the Holy Spirit until Ananias came and laid hands on him to receive the Holy Spirit. Everybody seeing this? Acts 9, 17. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. So we see that the salvation and the baptism in the Holy Ghost are two separate experiences. The Gentiles of Cornelius' household, salvation, and the baptizing of the Holy Spirit. We also have other scriptural accounts of those who were saved. And then immediately following salvation, they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We find one such example in the very next chapter, Acts 10, where the Bible gives us Peter's account of his visit to Cornelius' household, and the men of Cornelius' household were all Gentiles. They were not saved until Peter came and preached the gospel unto them. Some say that they were saved. There's a little bit of dispute about that and that kind of thing. But the thing is, they all got saved, and they all got filled. Whether or not you think they were saved first, then filled, and 
are, are saved and sealed instantly. Either way, that's still the same process. In Acts chapter 11, Peter recounts uh, his visit to Cornelius' household to the brethren in, in Jerusalem, Acts 11, 13 through 15. And he, Cornelius, showed us Peter and the six Jewish brethren how he had been seen in Angel's house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He will tell you the tell the words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. How many, how many know that? Listen, they didn't think it was for anybody. They thought they were the only ones that got the gift. Aren't you glad it wasn't just for them? Because we're grafted into the divine mouth too. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost <laughs> fell on them as I was on at the beginning. So the same way, what happened at, at the beginning? Were they talking about when they were up in the upper room? When the cloven tongues of fire came in, they got where people thought they were drunk and they were speaking in other tongues. That's how it was in the beginning. What he's saying ha happened here. And so, according to Peter's account, these Gentiles received the salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit almost simultaneously. Actually, the best time for someone to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit is when he is first saved. Uh, notice that no one in Canary's household failed to receive the Holy Spirit. And what happens sometimes people go on, if they don't get it right away, they're resistant to it, and uh, religious things get in the way, and their mind gets in the way. Uh, sometimes logic gets in the way and they cut themselves off for the very thing they need. And uh, it's, a, it's a sad thing. But the thing is, is that God is always there ready anytime they're ready to get out of the way and let him in. It's a free gift. Amen. So, actually speaking with tongues is what fully convinced Peter's company and the Jewish believers to accompany Peter. See, that's what... They're like, it was one thing for them to get saved. It was another thing when they start hearing them talk in other tongues. They're like, okay, they're really saved. Only God can do this. And so the believers were astonished that the Holy Ghost was poured out on the Gentiles. That's what it says, Acts 10, 45 through 46. And they of the circumcision which, which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was the poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. For they heard them speak with what? What did they hear them speak with? Yes. Tongue and magnify God. And then answered Peter also, as we mentioned earlier, there is no suggestion of waiting in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Ephesian disciples did salvation and baptism of the Holy Spirit. We find another example in the Bible showing that salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit are two separate experiences. Acts 19, 1 through 7. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast of came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. You know, you go to a lot of people today, and they're saved. Truly, I believe they're saved. And you say, Well, you ever received the Holy Ghost? Well, either they're going to be turned off and have a bunch of stuff, or they're going to say, I don't even know what you're talking about, man. And then you should say, Let me tell you. Come on. And then he said unto them, unto them, when were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. And then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of what? Repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. So they believed that Jesus was Lord. They had been baptized and made a full showing of who they were, but they had yet to receive the Holy Ghost. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and Paul laid his hands on them, and the Holy Ghost, what? Came on them. And what did they do? Faith with what? A little louder. And guess what else they did right off the bat? Prophesied. Now, that doesn't say they were operating the gift of prophet, but the gift of prophecy was operating. We need the gift of prophecy operating strongly today. But the kind that's done what? Decently and in order. Not the guy catching you out by the car to give you a word they don't want faster to hear. <laughs> That's not decently in order. And it says, and all the men were about 12. These uh, Ephesian disciples were also all Gentiles. They had all been followers of John the Baptist, but they hadn't heard that Jesus had come. Wherefore, therefore, they had never been saved and baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They had been baptized in the name of the Father according to John's baptism. That's another disputed thing. But the truth is, we know they were baptized in Jesus' name. They believed on Jesus. And then they got saved. We must understand the news didn't travel then like it does now. Back then, you could live your entire life and die 
And something new is really could have taken place 100 miles from you, and you would probably have never known because in that day, news only traveled by word of mouth. These folks had heard John the Baptist preach and tell that one was coming who would save them from their sins and baptize them in the Spirit, and they believed John's message and baptized with John, but they had never heard that Jesus had come. That's his opinion. I believe that they had because they knew who Jesus was. They were baptized in his name. Uh, when it related the second time, but before they said, we believe that John said the Lord was coming, we repented of our sins, and we believed he was Lord. That was their confession. They were walking in all the light they had, of course. Then here in Acts chapter 19, we see that Paul came to Ephesus and that these disciples, that Jesus the promised one had come and that Jesus had died on the cross and had risen again. Paul explained to these believers in Ephesus that the one whom John said would come after him had come and that now that they should believe on Jesus and be saved. So when Paul came to those Ephesian disciples, he then baptized and in the Lord Jesus they were born again. Acts 19, 5, Galatians 3, 27. But Paul didn't stop there. Paul just kept rocking and rolling. Getting people saved, getting people filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, he was walking in a couple of anointings. Apostolic anointing. He also wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit, so he laid hands on them to receive the Holy Spirit. When he did this, the Holy Ghost came upon them. They spake with tongues. Acts 19.6. These Ephesians, who were brand new converts, received the Holy Spirit. When Paul laid hands on them, all of them received the Holy Spirit without exception. You know, when I'm over in third world countries, people get healed much easier than they do in America. They get filled much easier because they don't have to get out all the garbage. You say it, they believe it, they receive it, and it's done. I've decided in my life to try to be more like that. I call that childlike faith. Second, in all these scriptures, we were... We have examined there is no suggestion the people in the early church were ever taught to tarry or wait before they could be filled with the Holy Ghost. They said, you want it, it's for you to receive, come get it. That's PB's version. <laughs> Wrong the dinner bell. The Bible should be our example in everything we do, not tradition or the opinion of men. Believers can receive this wonderful experience of the infilling of the Holy Spirit the Bible way. Now, I know I went fast, and I had to set some kind of record tonight by getting through a whole chapter. I don't remember the last time I did that. But I had felt like I had covered all this in depth multiple times before, so I didn't want to beat a dead horse, but I wanted to give you some good nuggets for it. So, with that being said, I don't even know what time it is. That ain't bad for doing a whole chapter. They hardly start till that 12 after. Wow. <laughs> Amen. So, what did y'all get from tonight? Pastor Tammy grabbed the mic. Heather, then Rebecca, and then Shauna. If you wonder what they're doing, they're raising their hand. We just give, there's no right or wrong answers. There's no, uh, we're not looking for the most eloquent answer. We just want to hear from your heart what you got from tonight. That way, when you go home, the enemy can't take it away from you. Right. Once you speak it out, it's a little easier to hold on to. Um, Philip served uh, being head table waiter while he was being a servant. God was betraying him, and then he was able to do great miracles. Amen. I uh, looked into the Word and let the Word work in me. Also, uh, Philip promoted others before himself and there's different kinds of ministries because one had the um where they could lay on hands and the other one had like, the healing like philip had the healing and the salvation ministry while uh, peter and john had the laying on of hands to get the holy ghost ministry but let's not make that into doctrine mm -hmm. because we're all called to lead people to Christ. We're all called to get people filled with the Holy Ghost. There's just some other people that have a little stronger anointing on some things, but that comes from the Lord's personal description, not biblical facts. Unless you're called to be a prophet or an evangelist, and then you could say that Peter, uh, Philip was operating in the gift of an evangelist. <laughs> Mighty miracles were happening in Philip's ministry, but in Acts chapter 8, 
Not, not one person received the Holy Ghost, but that was in part of Philip's ministry that he saved Philip from murder. Amen. Good stuff. Um, a lot of people want to peek before receiving the Holy Ghost. They want to they want to glimpse and stuff, but you have to fully submit and you have to fully be ready to receive all of them because it's not bits and pieces. It's the whole thing. Yeah, and as I was saying that, I had a vision, and sometimes I don't always speak all the things I see as the Lord's teaching, plus I was going fast, but it's kind of funny, it's kind of crazy, but when you're getting ready to bungee jump, you got to be fully committed, and you don't get the full experience until you step out there. There ain't no coming back once you step. <laughs> That's kind of like getting a Holy Ghost. Amen. Saved, keep it like that, and stay uh, with, with your and be loving to others as you would to yourself. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Somebody else tonight. Anybody else? Some people don't want to get rid of their demons because they are comfortable with them. Amen. We got several commenting online. If anybody got anything you want to share online, yeah, I'm reading them now. Hey, Pastor Daryl from Florida. Yay. Good to see you. Anybody else tonight? I go so fast, nobody else got nothing. <laughs> Nobody fell asleep tonight. Thank you. Oh. Isaiah's got something. Some people want, like, uh, but some people, uh, Tell people about Christ so that way they're ready to receive, and then the other people come to fill with the Holy Spirit. And that's a, but everybody can do it, but sometimes some people are called to do one thing more than the other. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. Last chance. Going once. Did I see a hand up back there? Be careful, Hunter. You're at an auction. You'll get called on. <laughs> Anybody else got anything tonight? I enjoyed tonight. Thank mm -hmm. you. Praise God. Glad you got something out of it. Pastor Tammy, do you have anything you want to share? It looks like you're. Oh, I know. I can't have to drop the mic here. <laughs> No, I, I, I just loved how they broke down everything so you could see it. it was how they're two totally separate things and how many verses just uh, confirm it. It's It was very eye-opening and wonderful to see that. and just It's just plain before your eyes that um, how people could believe otherwise. Um, so it was really awesome to see that. And, and also the verse, um, you know, that just shows there's a heaven and a hell. It, and we all talk about the go-ye verse, you know, go you and the gospel preach the gospel to every creature. We can say that all the time, but then it goes on to say that he that believeth is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And so it goes on to say that, but you know, we tend to always stick on that first part when we're out there speaking to people and witnessing to people, you know, or t talking to people, but um, but that it's a, it's a real place and there's a there's heaven and a hell and you got to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's life or death. And then he goes on and tells you, choose life. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you you choose, nobody else makes the choice for you. You choose. Make good choices. Mm -hmm. Amen. Experience Amen. the goodness of God in the land of the living. God is for you. He's not against you. Amen. Mm -hmm. So make good choices the rest of this week. Uh, dig in about the Holy Ghost. Sunday's going to be a rocking good time. Don't miss it. I plan to be here. Me and Jesus and the Holy Ghost. You're here. We, you bring him with you. 
and two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. Maybe you decide this Sunday you're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. All you got to do is walk up, to, uh, walk up here and ask for it. I'll do my part, you do your part, and God will meet us right here. We'll have a good time. Mm -hmm. You say, why don't you do it tonight? Well, if you was already ready, you'd already been up there. <laughs> 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 Pastor Tammy.